When the news about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order being a single-player story-driven game broke off last year, I, as well as many others, were left quite excited. Even more so when we found out that Respawn Entertainment, a developer I consider somewhat competent given today's climate, is behind it. To some degree, a lot of the excitement came from the fact that the studio successfully managed to develop games on their own terms in the past, somewhat escaping EA's greedy tactics. Apex Legends of course being an example, despite the game having its own fair share of criticism. On top of that, it's been years since anyone created a single player Star Wars game and not some always online shooter spin-off designed with only one purpose in mind, which would be of course, profits. I believe EA did a great deal of injustice to the Star Wars series and its fans with the way they handled the franchise in the past five years, so you can imagine the amount of anticipation there was for this new installment. Well, flash forward to yesterday's EA Play event, there was a 15 minute of uninterrupted gameplay, some details and not a whole lot of excitement following it. Don't get me wrong, the crowd was as loud as it gets when they saw it, it was by far the most viewed game out of the whole event and I'm still probably going to play it at some point, but the reception it got wasn't on par with the level I and probably even the guys over at Respawn were expecting. And there are a few reasons for why that is happening, so let's get at the bottom of this and don't worry, I'm not going to go all negative on the game, especially since I'm looking forward to it. Still, there are a lot of positive things to say about it and I intend to bring highlights from both sides of the spectrum, so let's dive right into this. I'm going to start things off with the obvious one and that is of course the visual presentation of the game, which seems that a lot of people have problems with, saying that the game looks dull, washed out and uninteresting. Now the game obviously takes a more realistic and grim approach with its graphics, with much less vibrancy compared with Battlefront 2 for example. It could very well be the fact that the planet that was showcased in the gameplay, maybe its climate or the overall fog somewhat contributes to that feeling, but I watched the uncompressed 4K video and it does retain that somber aesthetic, even in scenes that are perfectly lit. That doesn't mean that the game doesn't look pretty, it's just that there's this overall washed out image that we're being presented. It might be hard to spot due to YouTube's compression, but overall the environment has a great level of detail and the textures are definitely high quality despite all of its problems. Clothes do have a great deal of detail with dirt and tear being realistically displayed and inside areas are definitely the strong point here at least in my opinion and I really love the enemy design even though most of it was very familiar. Now the characters in general and the face animations look okay but for a game that is about to get released in the second half of 2019 it doesn't really stand out even compared to some of the games that have been out since last year. Again nothing too major, I much prefer gameplay and story over the graphics, the visuals are decent, but for a franchise like Star Wars, I'm not really sure that decent is a word that most people would like describing it. Anyway, moving forward to the combat and animations, right off the bat I will say this. The double jump animation is simply bad. I'm not sure what there is about it, but it looks like it got simply ripped right out of a 2002 game. And I'm not even kidding, it looks kinda bad. You can see the difference in animation quality when comparing the double jump with the wall walk for example, which is basically a staple for respawn entertainment at this point and obviously it would be perfectly made. For the wall walking there's way more animation points on the character's body, the movement seems more natural and fluid. With, the character leans and balances himself as he moves on the wall, adjusts both the legs and the hands as the movement goes forward, and right from the first second the sequence starts up to the very last second, there's different animations involved for all of the joints and it just looks so much better in general. Outside of that I don't see a problem with anything else in terms of animations, climbing up on structures also seems very fluid and pretty much on par with Assassin's Creed for example, maybe even slightly better since it's a new game and on top of that the run and sprint animations also aren't bad either, it's just that that double jump looks absolutely ridiculous and probably needs to be at least readjusted. 
Moving on to the combat, here is where most people found complaints, though I do want to go over some aspects that I really loved about it, and most probably the reasons that contribute to my decision to give this game a chance. The combat, despite being simplistic in nature, is quite skill-based and appears to have a learning curve. In simple terms, I would compare it with something like Dark Souls 3, or better yet, Bloodborne, or other slightly toned-down versions of it. For the tougher enemies, it puts a strong emphasis on dodging, parrying, timing attacks and generally forcing the players to learn the attack patterns of said enemies so they can better prepare for the fight. Enemies also appear to have a guard break bar and I just love this type of interactive combat that kind of forces you to always be cautious and as a result keeps the enjoyment for longer periods of time compared to simpler games. So overall this approach is really really well made. Of course there's no Star Wars game without using the power of the force and there are a few attacks that can be seen in the preview itself, though there might be more. First, there's a force pull ability that brings to your hands any regular sized enemy or object, and there's also a force push, which again works on enemies and objects likewise. And you can create fun scenarios over here, like pushing a droid into someone's unsuspecting face, or even use tree lines to swing yourself across gaps. There's also a charge dash or leap attack that you can use in order to surprise your enemy or use as a gap closer, and one ability that seems to be showcased multiple times is of course the time slow. Now this works quite interesting because it seems that it affects one enemy at a time including their attacks. So you can use it to slow down some of the attacks when you're feeling overwhelmed or likewise have fun with it by making the enemy to get shot by his own bullet which I found really hilarious. I will state the obvious though, the slow time ability applies a very disturbing blur effect on the enemy itself and it generally is painful to look at. If you have a problem with stuff that gets overly blurred like I do, then you might feel eye discomfort looking at it and that's at least what happened in my case and I'm seeing a lot of people expressing concern about it being too over blurred. Furthermore, it seems that our move set is rather limited with very few attack types, though this doesn't exclude the possibility for additional skills to be unlocked later on. This is pretty much early on as I'm deducing from the video, and there is a level system with skill points to invest, so I'm expecting a lot more abilities, or at the very least some new stuff to make the combat a little bit more variable. The biggest problem I see, and I'm also seeing people mentioning it, has to be with the fact that there is a lack of dismemberment, and the overall lightsaber effects aren't really that great. It kind of feels like quote unquote a light baton rather than a lightsaber. And with this I don't mean that the game absolutely needs blood and gore, especially so with its current ESRB rating, it's just that the lightsabers are notoriously good at cutting almost anything like butter, especially limbs, so there's that. Now the tougher enemies do look impressive and quite difficult to take on, so again a big plus from me, and they can adapt to your attacks even to your force attacks such as the push or the pull and use them to propel themselves to attack you in the process. You can really mess it up if you're not being too careful as they have some really powerful attacks from what I'm seeing. Now mission design wise I don't think there's much to complain over here, we didn't see too much but what we saw so far looks pretty okay. There's some small puzzle elements and a lot of platforming over here which I kinda like. As I've said the level design looks really good so far and the environment features a great deal of destructibility. Moving on music wise the soundtrack is top notch. Definitely Definitely it makes me feel like I'm in a Star Wars movie or well game, but unfortunately I can't show it to you guys over here due to copyright issues and it's probably one of the strongest points of the series. Overall the game is okay, it's probably going to score quite well, at least that is my current bet on it, but that can be quite a double edged sword. For a franchise like Star Wars, just okay probably won't cut it for the most diehard fans, and I can see why the reception has been so lukewarm. The game looks pretty good, but it doesn't evoke too much excitement. With that being said though, I'm still very much interested in it and will probably buy it. If not for me, at least for my wife, as I know she does love the Star Wars series and anything Star Wars related, so there is that. But that's all the time I have for now, tell me what do you guys think of the 15 minute gameplay reveal. Comment down below what you enjoyed the most about it, or likewise, what you didn't enjoy so much. In the meantime, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, also subscribe to the channel and activate that notification bell if you want to get these videos earlier, and I will see you later, so peace out.